well, we said what we said, but uh, of course that game is still fresh, but uh, we played well uh, against a team who won their last five or six games, one nil, kept the clean sheet. We were good, we scored two goals. The only thing that I'm not not uh, not uh, happy with is the way we played after we scored the goal, the second one. We just waited for uh, for the final whistle. We didn't keep the ball, uh, and that we sh we should have done better. To be fair, yeah. Um, Andy Carroll was interviewed afterwards, and there's been suggestions that because he said that the referee was trying to even things up with the penalty that he may face disciplinary action. Would, would that be perhaps a bit unfair? Do you think? Well, well, it would. Yeah, I mean, Andy said what he said. It was straight after the game. It was like. Uh, you are hot, you are disappointed because he was in that tackle. That referee gave the penalty away. and uh, But it wasn't anything major in that uh, statement or saying. So I don't see it as a big... It, it's, it's what normally the players or the managers are saying after the game. So that was nothing in it uh, for him to... F face the fine or whatever. There were instances in that game, lots of pushing and pulling in penalty areas, both penalty areas as well. How difficult is that for, for referees now? Yeah, I said after the game, I, I ain't going to say it again now. Well, we're now the same all, all managers today because it's become a Yeah, but today. I said... Not just with your game, but with, with other games. It's happening everywhere. So we're just saying that what can referees do? Should they be awarding penalties all the time or just accept I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I said what I said and... Uh, what I said after the game, uh, from all the comments that I read or heard, mine was the most sympathetic one towards the referee. And it is hard for him. It was hard for him. It is hard for them. Mm. Is there? A, I mean, we or FA should find a way to help them to ease that job. But it is. It is. It was hard for him in that game. It was extremely hard. Uh, the pressure was there, the demands were there, mm, and it's uh, it's like that, especially towards the end of the season, especially when 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 you have a derby game, it is played uh, for them, unbelievable important game, for us also great game because we needed points, and so it was hard for him. How do you see your situation now? Do you still see yourself in, in terms of being in contention for for top four, or is the gap now? Too big to, to, to well, the gap is the gap is big, but uh, the gap can be reduced, of course. But we have to win games. Uh, but we we are still in a race, in a big race for for uh, for European spot, and we're gonna do everything we can. There have been a few draws recently, and a few decisions you felt have gone against you. Has that affected the squad at all? In, ter in terms of their mentality going out on the pitch, or in terms of the, the spirit going into matches and looking forward to the rest of the season? Well, whoever watched the game against Leicester, uh, it is a big proof that it didn't affect our confidence, that it didn't affect our motivation, because especially against them on the home soil, to come back from 1-0 down and not to be happy with 1-1, to chase for another goal, it shows that we have a Great team spirit, great determination, and uh, great motivation, of course. Uh, David Gold has said that, um, and David Sullivan has said that there was some abuse from the Leicester fans um, being reported. Were you aware of any yeah, of that? Yeah, this is, yeah, but why are you pushing that? I mean, we have a. In one hand, you are all asking, like, we should ease the referees, we should forget about it, we should that, we should that, and now we don't talk about what for game, we talk about the. Things that happened a couple of days ago. If we want to ease them, then then stop stop asking that. I mean, ask that after the game or whatever, or the day after if there is a press conference. But now, okay, that was done. Now we have a big game of football tomorrow night, and that that will also ease their job, not to drag on for a week or whatever, but to okay, that was it. We have a new game. In terms of that Watford game, they've got a big. 
FA Cup semi-final coming up, and their manager has already said that the players have been a bit distracted over the last few weeks. Is this a situation that you think you might exploit particularly as they might make quite a few changes as well? Well, yeah, in one case, uh, in one hand, definitely, uh, they will probably think a little bit about the game for a weekend. It's a big game for them. And uh, maybe he will rest some players or whatever. Uh, but on the other hand, they they bought a lot of players at the start of the season and in the January transfer window. So they are all experienced international players. And uh, so they have a big squad, they have a good squad. And uh, they have a certain way of playing. And those players who are going to maybe start tomorrow, they are definitely going to... If they didn't play for a weekend, they're gonna have some fresh legs as well. So, which is which is good for them. But uh, no matter which team they're gonna put on tomorrow night, uh, we we need a win, and we're gonna do everything to beat them. Oh. Okay. Um, can I get the latest team news? Is there any update for us? Uh, we have a full squad in. They're all available, and it is a good situation for us. Sako is back from injury, so all of the players are available. Okay, okay, we still have one training, and the game against Leicester was was only a couple of days ago. So some, sometimes you find something new in the training if somebody feels something. But so far, we have a full squad, full squad available, which is good, of course. From what you've said, you, you, you're wanting the three points. You feel like there's something still to play for. You're, you're not tempted to try different things, vary anything up for this match? Mm, no. No. We play good. Uh, okay, I said, of course, I'm not happy that, that, that we conceded many goals uh, in the last few games. But uh, and I'm not happy as I said the way we played after we scored the second goal at Leicester. But in general, uh, we are playing good. We are there. Still, the season is pretty much on for us, and we are in. We are fighting, and uh, we are fully motivated. As I said, in terms of having a lot of draws recently. How do you feel that you can turn that into, into wins at the moment? Well, <laughs> my, <laughs> that's a good question, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's no formula for it, but uh, as I said, if you take example from, from the last game, we were 2-1. Um, we were just waiting for the game to finish instead of keeping the ball, the thing that we are normally good at to keep them away from from our half of the pitch, to be fair. But we didn't do it, so mm, it's not a matter of concentration. But it is, it is, it is, we should be more, when it comes to that, which is not easy, because the other, the, the opponent is taking risk, more and more risk. But we should uh, play that last, last five minutes with, with more confidence. Finally from me, we've had the PFA announcements, we've also had talk of who might go to the Euros, and you in these press conferences have been subjected to questions about that with players. Do you feel overall that West Ham players have been overlooked quite a lot this season? Yeah, I said it so many times that I, uh, maybe I'm not the right person because I'm not objective when it comes down to our or my players, but uh, everybody is praising our season, that we have a really good season and all that. We have more than few English players playing, so mm, it's because of them that we are there where we are. And so in my point of view, <coughs> some of them sh should be in the squad. How different do you think Watford are at this point in the season to when you played them earlier back in October? How different they are? Well, they are secure now, and they are they in semi-finals. They beat Arsenal to go there, 
away. Great. They are a good team. Uh, that game, that game is one of very few games that I was really disappointed and angry after the game. That was like, uh, from our side, very, very bad game. We simply, we, we didn't show up and they deserved it. It was 2-0, yeah. So, a good team, they are hard to beat. They were a bit lucky last weekend for West Brom to miss a couple of penalties. But uh, they are th the way they play, the way their strikers are playing. So they are still very compact. They're very hard to to go through them, let's say. And up front they have a couple of players who are really capable of, of harming. And they are harming any defense that they're facing. So uh, very good team. And uh, no matter which team comes tomorrow night, uh, it's going to be difficult for us. And who are your Gomez? He, Sabio, you mentioned against West Brom last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you made Brill of him? Uh, brilliant. I mean, he's been in the game for such a long time and he was always good. Uh, whether that was where he was at uh, PSV, yeah. PSV, then Spurs, now Watford. I mean, he's now, he's one of their more most consistent players and when it comes down is it uh, when it comes down to the penalties it's like uh, he's so huge with so long arms that that it's not easy to score it score the penalty and the and the way he scored the second one is 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 like it's like it was simply a great save so he's, he's top top goalkeeper yeah